Sophie Hardy and the Battle of the Myriad by M. R. Dale, narrated by Leona Hall. Chapter 17 Clear and Present Danger. He will bring an army, Sophie added, to part of a conversation she very much hoped was over. She had recapped everything about how technology had moved on and how Alton King was now the most successful businessman in the world who would do anything it took to protect the empire that he had built and that his plan was to kidnap mythical creatures to show to the entire human race that they were back and ready to do harm. The faces of the children backed up Sophie's brief summation of what was going on outside the world of the myriad of Meliora. The girls looked ejected and apologetic for what humanity had become and how they had treated the mythicals that had turned out so much better than them from what had been a massive disadvantage. Echidna stroked her chin and looked to be deep in thought. I have no idea how much time we have, but he wants some of you. It will prove his innocence in what happened last week, Sophie concluded. If he can prove that mythicals are still around, then humans will hunt you again and nobody will be safe, human or mythical. It would bring a war, Yasmin jumped in. Echidna stood up from her chair and slid over towards one of the huge glass vantage points, looking roughly in the area of the sand and desert. Sophie saw her close her eyes and focused even more. She could see that Echidna was facing an impossible situation. That and Condonar is coming, Clara chimed in without thinking of the consequences. The others shot Clara the same glare that they had given her in Sophie's bedroom before they left, but Clara didn't care. What? Clara shrugged. She may as well know everything. Sophie was cross with her, but agreed that Echidna and the Myriad should be in full possession of what was going on out in the world, and although she thought diplomacy might have been more in order, Echidna soon put Sophie's worries to rest. Thank you for your honesty and bluntness, she said. Clara smirked at the others. If the situation had been any more informal or less stressful, Sophie was sure Clara probably would have stuck her tongue out at them, but thankfully, Clara sided with maturity. Sophie could tell that Clara had something else on her mind and thought she had worked out what it was. Echidna then went on to add, From my limited understanding of her, we have nothing to fear of Condonar. The children all looked at each other. There was the possibility of getting answers as Echidna had clearly heard the name before. What do you know about her? Sophie asked excited. Echidna turned to look at them. Just the rumours and the stories that have been passed around by the visitors and guests from the stars, she said. Four of the children, including Kingsley, leant forward on the glass table, ready to receive any information that three of them could use. Lizzie didn't sit forward. She just continued to look through the floor at what was beneath her. There isn't much, but I'll tell you what we have heard, but only after we've dealt with this Alton King problem first. Call it an I'll help you if you help me situation, Echidna said. Sophie was ready to accept that as a compromise, and so did the others except Clara, who still looked a bit dejected. She definitely had something else on her mind that she would rather find out about before Condonar. Knowing what it was that Clara was desperate to ask, and remembering that Clara had put her own interests second before they set off to deal with Desmerelda, Sophie caught Clara's gaze and pointed at Echidna with her eyes and head, almost like she was giving Clara permission to ask the question Sophie knew that she had. Clara nodded in realisation at what her cousin was saying, do you know anything about my mum and dad, or have any mind readers that I could use? Clara asked. Echidna looked at her for a second and studied her. Sophie could see Clara getting more and more nervous the longer the staring went on and the tension around the room built. Echidna did eventually break the silence. I personally cannot, but we have a new member here who will gladly try and find out for you, Echidna began. She then continued to look at Clara in an unusual way that she wasn't looking at the others with. There is something about you. You are not mythical, but... Sophie and the rest of the gang waited for the sentence to finish, but it didn't. But what? Clara asked, about ready to put her fist through the glass table if someone didn't give her some information that she could use. There is something, but... I don't know, Echidna finished. Clara stood up aggressively and walked away from the table, clearly trying to keep her anger in. Sophie tried to get the conversation back on track and find a way to help the myriad and give Clara time to calm down. What would you like us to do? Sophie asked, completely oblivious as to what Echidna would actually need her to do in order to stop King from destroying this glorious world and taking mythicals just to prove himself right. It was also the same question she had asked King not long ago, but the difference in the sentiment behind them couldn't have been stronger.
Echidna smiled and could see that Sophie was doing everything she could to try and support the myriad, despite having only just met them. It is custom when faced with a decision like this that we put it to our residents. We do not run a dictatorship. The members will have their voice heard and we will make a decision based upon what they want. Sophie nodded. The opinion that the myriad were people who valued and respected each other grew even more. Echidna would let her people decide, not go and decide without consulting them first. How long will that? Sophie began to ask, but Echidna cut her off. Not long, she interjected. As she said this, the large doors opened again and Typhon and Lichen appeared in the doorway. Clara, go with Typhon. He will see that you have the answers that you need, Echidna said. Still a few feet away from the table and with her chin resting on her hand, Clara turned around as fast as lightning and began to stumble over her words. What? But, but you said... I said we have a new creature here that could help you find your mum and dad. Typhon will take you to him. Now? Clara snapped back. She didn't mean to sound rude, but the shock of it all happening so fast had come from nowhere and she was about to take an enormous step that she assumed she was going to have to wait to take. Yes, now, unless you would rather wait. Echidna said back, knowing full well what the answer would be. Clara didn't respond, but instead just looked at Sophie, who nodded excitedly at her and mouthed the word, Go! Clara then scampered towards the door, where Typhon stood at least two and a half times the size of her. Do you want one of us to go with you? Yasmin asked. I think that would be best, Sophie added. Clara wasn't thinking clearly. The excitement and sudden anticipation was clouding her judgment, so all she could manage was an, uh, that's a yes then. Yas, go with her, Sophie instructed, and Yasmin made her way after Clara and the giant winged Typhon. Sophie's gaze turned back to Echidna. Thank you, she mouthed, knowing what a life-changing yet effortless thing Echidna was about to do for her cousin. Echidna shrugged her shoulders as if it was nothing, then set about giving her next instruction. Kingsley and Lichen, round everyone, and I mean everyone up, and bring them to the Chancery. Tell them it is of the utmost importance, and that this human girl will be addressing them. Echidna pointed her tail at Sophie. Sophie pointed at herself and mouthed, me, in disbelief. Hours ago, humans had no idea this place existed, and now one eleven-year-old was about to tell them of a potentially life-threatening peril that was incoming. How many will be there that I need to address? Sophie asked, not being able to think of another question that fit the situation. At last count, Echidna began, thinking about her next sentence, about a couple of million. Sophie stared at Echidna in shock. Speak in front of a couple of million mythicals and tell them humanity was coming to get them. The sinking feeling came back, but this was purely down to nerves. Everything else that had caused it had most definitely, if only temporarily, been forgotten about. Sophie then turned slowly to see Lizzie now looking through the glass table, baffled by where she was and seemingly what was happening. Sophie smiled and weirdly wondered what Tom would make of Lizzie being like this. On his way out of the room, Kingsley put his hand on Sophie's shoulder and said, Good luck, with a huge grin on his face. Thanks, Sophie replied sarcastically as the thought of her dad left her mind. There was so much to think about, Sophie's brain was again running at a million miles an hour. The Sophie Hardy Saga was written and produced by M.R. Dale and narrated and produced by Leona Hall. If you enjoyed it and would like to continue to follow the adventures of Sophie and her friends in coming episodes, then please subscribe through one of the many podcast providers out there. The links for each of these can be found on our website. If you require more information, visit our many social media channels, or if you would like to purchase a copy of the book, then be sure to check out our website, www.sophiehardysaga.com. Thank you for listening and we hope you enjoy.